Hi there. I've been thinking. I recently read a book published by Patti Smith in 2010 called Just Kids. For those of you who don't know who Patti Smith is, she's a writer, poet and musician whose groundbreaking album Horses in 1975 is seen as uh, in many ways a forerunner of punk music. She may be best known for her single Because the Night, which came out in 1978 and which she co-wrote with Bruce Springsteen. But above all, she's probably a poet, and, and you can see that in her, her songs as well, as well as being a published writer. The Just Kids is about the time that Patti Smith spent in New York from the late 1960s through the 1970s. She went to New York to try to become established as a poet, as a writer. She became involved with the whole artistic creative scene in New York at that time. The heart of that scene was probably the Chelsea Hotel, where so many famous people have lived over the years, including people like Ernest Hemingway, uh, Janis Joplin, uh, some of the beat poets. And she describes her time mingling with those people, mixing with those people, but above all, with her great friend, or a man who was to become her great friend, Robert Mapplethorpe, who was a very controversial photographer. By all means, look up the work of Robert Mapplethorpe, but be prepared to be uh, somewhat shocked. New York at that time reminds me of Paris in the 1920s, when there was this whole meeting of minds of great writers and artists, again, people like Hemingway, F. Scott Fitzgerald, Picasso, all these people were mixing together, meeting together, and uh, I guess fermenting ideas, fertilizing ideas, and New York at that time was like this. There was this great sharing of ideas, this outburst of creativity that uh, led to so much in the years that was to, were to follow. I suppose they probably also uh, fed each other's neuroses. Uh, they fed the darker side of life too. And so many people of that era didn't necessarily survive succumbing to... Uh, alcoholism, drugs, possibly AIDS at that time as well. Robert Mapplethorpe was one of those who died of AIDS in the later 1980s. As I was reading the book, I began to wonder whether such a thing could ever, ha ever happen again, this coming together of great minds in a single place. And I thought, probably no. And part of the reason for that is because communication, worldwide communication, has actually become so easy now that people don't actually have to live together to, co to uh, collaborate with each other. People for, uh, can collaborate with each other when they live on opposite sides of the world. And that's good. I mean, that's a great opportunity. But it also means that people are not sharing that lived experience. They're not there in their day-to-day -day lives, you know, having a drink together, uh, swapping cigarettes and drugs and whatever else they did, just getting together and talking through the night, bumping into each other uh, in the foyer of a hotel or in uh, a coffee shop down the road. There's just not that kind of activity now. It's not necessary for the physical production of collaborative works to for the people to even meet together anymore and I, i'm sure often they don't now of course there is that darker side of that meeting together there is the uh the feeding of the dark side if you like that comes with that but there's also obviously a great loss and i guess i feel a little bit sad about that now i'm not at all a nostalgic person but i do recognize that that uh, the loss of that kind of intimacy, that shared intimacy, 
is quite profound. Now, reading this book actually sent me on an interesting journey because I, I knew of Patti Smith from her earlier work, somewhat. Uh, I also knew of Robert Mapplethorpe. I happened to see an exhibit of Robert Mapplethorpe's photography in Florence at one stage. But the book opened up a whole new world to me. I, I, I began to listen, and I'm still listening, to all of Patti Smith's works now. I've gone back and looked at some of Robert Mapplethorpe's work, and it's really, really interesting to look at his early photographs of Patti Smith and to put, uh, to put the face and the words together and then to listen to her music uh, and put the voice together with all that. It makes this whole a, a really um, multidimensional experience. But it's also led me to other people because I discovered, for instance, I, well, I remember hearing that this guy called Tom Verlaine had died. Now, I didn't know who Tom Verlaine was, but some of the, my contemporaries were saying, oh, look, he was in this band television, he did all this and did all that. Well, I realized that Patti Smith watched the band television of which Tom Verlaine was a main member. And she was clearly influenced by him, particularly in her vocal style. She even had a relationship with him. So this led me to listen to music by this band television and and, I'm, and listening to Tom Verlaine's solo work, which I'd never done before. So it opened up a whole lot of, uh, a whole new world for me. Ah, it also brought to my attention again, a great song by Leonard Cohen called Chelsea Hotel Number no. Two. I knew of the song, but I didn't pay that much attention to it. But then I understood the significance of it, of the, of the woman that uh, Le Leonard Cohen meets in the elevator is in fact Janis Joplin. And it comes within that time period that Patti Smith is writing about it. So now I listen to that song also with a whole new sort of perspective and point of view. I recommend you go listen to it if, you, if you're not familiar with it. That's uh, Chelsea Hotel Number no. 2 by Leonard Cohen. The other interesting thing about this is that I only discovered the book by Patti Smith from a YouTube video that Dua Lipa uh, posted on her media webpage, site, whatever it is. And she does an interview with Patti Smith about this book. And I thought it was absolutely fascinating and it led me to go and read the book. So. Thank you to Dua Lipa for that. And that, I, show, I suppose, shows up the really positive side of this, uh, the internet and the worldwide communication that we have access to now. Without that interview by Dua Lipa, I probably would never have had a chance to read that book and would never have followed the path that I've followed subsequently. So anyway, I think all of that's really worth thinking about.